We're good? Yeah. Okie dokie. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of, or a episode of uh, Not For Nothing. I want to uh, thank these two fellows for coming up from fucking New York. Uh, you guys want to introduce yourself real quick? Sure. Uh, oh, which camera do I have? No, you know what, just talk, because he's going to do it, cool. and fuck it. Yes, yeah, uh, conversation. So, uh, my name's Gabe, and I tattoo over at No Idols in uh, New York City. Been there uh, around five to six years, and uh, no, yeah. been more than that. No, are you sure? Yeah. Five, six years. Oh, yeah, at least seven. Okay, sorry. Seven, at least seven, seven to eight years. Ooh, yeah, time, that's time, that's time a big flying. difference, yeah. yeah. Time is flying. I, I'm bad with numbers, but... Yeah, it's it's been great. Uh, now, were you, were you did you work there when they were upstairs? Oh uh, yeah, oh, at the Bowery great. location, nice. which was also fun. You know, we had the location there with a little outdoor like area, looking into like the almost like a Chinatown alleyway. Nice, really cool. You know, we, we did some good tattoos there. Nice gatherings, nice little parties. And, uh, yeah, no, it's it's been good. Uh, two locations right now. We're located on uh, on Orchard Street. Yeah, and that's a, that's a fucking sweet spot. I mean, yeah, it's, spot. I, it's funny when I went to visit you guys. I was shocked that that's where you guys were because it's, you don't see a lot of ground floor tattoo shops, especially in that kind of a neighborhood. Right. Because it is kind of a it's a nice neighborhood. Yeah, you got really lucky there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, he, it was right after COVID. He gave me the earful on that one. Down there. I wish I'd talked to him about that. I, 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 we can talk about you. We can talk about that. So you want to introduce yourself about? Yeah. Uh, my name is Matt Triano. I work with Gabe at No Idols in uh, New York City. Uh, I've been tattooing for about 18 years and I uh, kind of do like a little neo-traditional style. So both of you guys started in different parts of New York, yeah. correct? Yeah. So let's start with you. Where did you originally start before you moved into Manhattan? So I originally started uh, growing up in Miami. Oh, okay. So I started my apprenticeship there. Um, and then when I when I graduated my apprenticeship, I moved into uh, to New York City uh, eighteen years ago. So I have almost like the same amount of time at tattooing okay. as Matt. But coming fresh out of my apprenticeship, I came to the city. Okay, so you've been so you've been now. Were you working in Manhattan or were you working with the other bus? So I was working in uh, in Brooklyn. Okay. Before I came into Manhattan. Okay. Yeah, Brooklyn was pretty much like half my time tattooing. Hey, okay. Yeah. And you were from further north? Yeah, I was in Rockland County, which is uh, pretty much nowhere. Like, everybody, it's funny, it's not that far north of Manhattan. Right. Everybody in the city was like, oh, you're upstate? I'm like, no, it's not really upstate. It's like a half hour outside the city. It's not really that far. That's Well, that's the funny thing, being from Long Island. Anytime somebody came from anywhere north of, of Manhattan, it was always considered it was always upstate. upstate. Yeah. Yeah, it was always considered upstate. So I would imagine being in in, in, in the five boroughs, anything outside of the yeah. five boroughs is upstate. And it's yeah. so funny because like for me, an hour north, like if we were to say like Poughkeepsie, like that's where I would say is upstate. But I think even those people up there an hour north of me is like, no, like there's another six hours north of us, right? So Yeah, exactly. So I had family at own place in the Catskills. So whenever we talked about going to visit, it was always going upstate, which was, and the Catskills isn't that far outside. It's like two hours. Yeah, it's not yeah, terrible. Exactly. You know I mean, and being from Long Island, so. Yeah. Um, so how long did you work out there before you moved into the city? Uh, about 10 right. years. About 10 years. And yeah. you were how long in, in before you moved into the city? Oh, I was uh, one year. Year one. Oh, year one. Yeah, like right out of my apprenticeship. No, okay, so you went from Miami to Brooklyn, but how, how soon before you went from Brooklyn into Oh, Miami? yeah. Uh, almost about the same. Oh, okay. So only about another year. So, yeah, so, so ten, ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Ten okay. Years. And then, yeah, technically that that would line up with when I started with uh, No Idols. In so the, city. the reason why I ask that is because, like, okay, so I grew up on Long Island. Yeah. Long Island is a different fucking world when you think of New York. Like when you think <laughs> New York, you always say, yeah. Well, I could, anytime people would say, oh, "Where you're from?" I go, "New York." But then you have to further say, "Oh, from Long Island." New York. Because it's different than being in the five boroughs. Yeah. I always get a kick out of people that used to come into the shop that the guy I worked for at the time had all these like musicians and a couple of actors. And he'd be like, oh, where are you from? And they'd be like, New York. And I'm like, well, where are you from before you moved to Manhattan? And now you consider yourself a New Yorker. And they're all from like the Midwest or someplace else. <laughs> yeah. um, so how different is the other, other boroughs, the other parts of New York com compared to... Because the cost of living is different. Yeah. Yeah. So where I was, one of the biggest things that I found that furthered my career coming into Manhattan is where I was is that like, 
it's a very small community, right. and you're not going to get people flying in from out of state or even driving in from out of state to get tattooed by like, right. the tattooers in, in those towns are only tattooing the locals. Right. They're not getting anything exciting. Maybe once in a while they do a really cool tattoo, but other than that, like it was mainly like walk in, small things, names, butterflies. You, you become know. like a hometown hero. Exactly. And that's really what I was. I was actually just joking around with, uh, uh, do you know J.R. Maloney? Yeah. Yeah. So he, I don't know him, but I know him. Yeah. Okay. So he was at um, our shop the other day, and he's been tattooing in Rockland for like over 30 years. Oh, shit. Okay. And uh, so when I was there, I was there for 10, and we were talking about having, like, do you have a guy? Like, yeah, we got, we got a guy. Like, you got a guy for electrician. You got a mechanic. You yeah, got a plumber. Like, of course. And so being in those hometowns tattooing, you got a guy for everything. Right. Exactly. Coming into the city, I don't got a guy anymore. Yeah. Because it's just so spread out. People are coming in from so many different locations that I don't really have. I have a clientele, but it's not like, it doesn't feel like a family clientele. Right. It's funny too, because like when I left New York, when we had the, when we moved here, like, so I went from New York to New Hampshire and then from New Hampshire to here. When we built this place, I had friends come up from New York to help out because I just couldn't, there was only so much I can actually, I didn't know anybody when right. I moved here. Eric knew a bunch of guys and whatnot, but when it came to floors and all the rooms, I called my, my friend who's been doing floors forever. I'm like, hey man, can you come up here? Dude, these motherfuckers rolled up. They were here for a day and a half. Like they, they showed up at like 6 a.m., unloaded, fucking laid the floor, worked till 8 o'clock at night, came back the next morning, polished it up within two hours. They go to leave, and the fucking contractor that's working on the space, he goes, who the fuck are these guys? Can I get their number? I'm like, dude, they're from Long Island. Like they came up just as a hookup. So, yeah. You know, so they were, it was, but that's the thing. That's my guy. Yeah. Matter of fact, when I redo exactly. the floors in here, that guy is coming back after 20 years and he's going to do the floors here. Of course. Yes. Yeah. But how was it like, like Brooklyn? I mean, the five boroughs so to me are always kind of, I, they're, they're kind of synonymous minus yeah. the traffic and parking. Correct. <laughs> Honestly, uh, there, it's funny that you even mention it because even though it's still like the city and the bur- part of the boroughs, um, they each one have like a different vibe and also a different type of clientele. Um, So like Brooklyn was almost like very local in a sense, very much so. And uh, going into the city, it just, it really like the vibe just changes. It opens the, it opens the the type of clientele. Correct. And even like, believe it or not, it just makes it also more international. Right. It's uh, the one thing I noticed with the show that you guys do, and we'll get on that. Too, you get people from everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. It's like it's nice to be able to have that. The it's not just the allure of the shop and the people that, that are there. Right. But it's also the fact that you're you're in Manhattan. It's accessibility. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, so that's the thing. It's not. It's accessible. Yes. But it's a pain in the dick. But it's yeah. a pain. Yeah. In the <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Where there's a will, there's a way. But it. <laughs> It's a pain to do. It's like, like this was yeah. nice coming here. You right off the, the highway. And yeah, pull right in. Yeah. Like when you asked me, you, yeah. and then, again, that's part of the reason. So we used to be in downtown, and we were second floor. And to me, that was like I look at New Haven as being a, it's a, it's a town. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not a fucking city. And everybody here looks at it. Well, it's a city, and I'm like, hey, is it though? <laughs> you know. So so, but parking is a pitch. It's 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 got all the issues of a city, but in a much smaller environment. Yeah. When we got out of downtown after six years, we moved here. And it was the same thing. It was right off the fucking highway. I still had clients coming from all over the country, all over the world at some points. You know, Eric had some people coming in from out of the state. So it's a lot easier to get to. And then when they asked, who's parking like what you did today? Yeah. It's like, oh, we have a lot. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> the fucked up thing about this, and I'm, I'm sure you guys can probably attest to this, when we left the city, when we did the art shows, art shows crushed it in downtown. We moved here. Yeah, no I mean that makes sense. Yeah, it's but how that drives me fucking crazy. We give them a place to park. Of people walking around though, right? There is that, but yeah. we, these are people who come to the show for the event. Yeah, specifically. Okay. So then you wonder, it was like, where are you guys at? Yeah, yeah. yeah. tattooers from all over the state right. come to the show. They come downtown. They won't come here. And I'm like, what did we do? Did we do we stick now? Like, what happened? You think that has something to do with just the? Uh, what are we going to do after or before? Which right? has been uh, bar to walk right. to, or, and that is like, are they making the. Are, are they making Can we make a night out of it exactly and that's a point that's, and that's exactly what was told to me it's like you know man people are coming to the city and that's something I would scoff at but looking back on it it's like no dude these people do not live in New Haven they come from all over the state to go downtown to park their car walk up to the shop have a drink check out the art 
fuck off, go get something yeah. to eat, and then come back up to the shop. And it's their night in the city. So you're right. It's something that took me a very long time to understand. Yeah. And it drives me crazy to this fucking day. Of course. You know. Yeah. I can see that. For sure. Well, and even, uh, like, so our shop that we're at right now, there's bars lined up all up and down yeah. the street. Like, if your client's getting tattooed and he brings his girlfriend, the client's sitting there for hours, she can just go fuck off and you know, I'm exactly. go shopping for a little bit. I can yeah. like, you know, grab something to eat. Come back, check and, be, out and because it is New York and you are in a really nice neighborhood, it doesn't necessarily affect it. When we were downtown, I would have people come in from like, you know, Missouri to get yeah. tattooed. The girlfriend's sitting there and I'm like, you know, you can walk outside. She's like, no, I'm good. Yeah, I had that too. It was a shitty neighborhood that yeah. we were in. Like there was a bus stop across the street and people were just like, no, I'm, I'm, I'll just stay here for six hours, you know. And it's the point where they were like, well, do we get something to eat down here? I'm like, yeah, it's not that bad. Just don't make eye contact. <laughs> it's, like, it's like going to the gym. It's like going yeah. to the zoo. You just got to take care of you. Know. So just walk very fast and keep your eyes forward. Um, yeah, I, I get that, and and that's what I liked about where you guys are because like usually when I get down there, I I, I, I I'm cracked when I have to drive into the city and fucking park and pay ridiculous amounts of money or whatever. But the going to that shop, I, I enjoy it. I didn't, it doesn't necessarily bother me too much. The fact that there's a hotel right around the corner is just even better yeah. for guests and stuff. What's nice about where we are too is that free parking starts fairly early. It's 7 p.m. Right. We're parking the street for free. Whereas right. other places usually like a little bit later. Um, so it, it, all the guys who are coming for the podcast too, they're like, you can park wherever you want. It's yeah, right. Easy. But again, well, if they're not spending the night. The problem right. with that was like yeah. when I go, I usually spend the night because I'm going to get banged up after yeah. four. And it's just like I'm not driving back to Connecticut. Right. So, um, it's funny the reason why I asked how parking is though is not because of anything other than should I bring my car or should I bring my truck oh uh, that's true because you're not living in Manhattan yeah. it's easier because that's the other thing neither one of you guys live in Manhattan you're living in, yeah, in, in Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, I mean you're up it's still in, in upstate, yeah, yeah, in upstate, yeah. <laughs> upstate. <laughs> well that was the thing that did surprise me it was it did shock me how fat how, how close you are considering you're not in the city you know are you driving because and that, the other thing that shocked me was Oh, you motherfuckers driving the city. Yeah. yeah. How much of a pain in the ass is that? I, f- I figured it out. I figured it's a, it's a huge pain in the ass. Um, Honestly, I prefer it over taking public transportation. Do you? 100%. Yeah. I like being in my own space. Now, do you think, you think it's because you didn't grow up in, in Manhattan? No, it's because I don't want to rely on somebody else's schedule. Agreed. If I want to just bail out now, I'm going to go now. I don't have to so, wait another half hour for the next train to come. Yeah. I did. I did about... I did about twelve years with uh, the public transportation from you know from New York, right? Uh, riding the trains, the buses, everything. It was when COVID happened. That's that's when I was. Like, oh. That's when I was like, I'm getting a car. Not because I wanted to stay away from everybody's germs, but it was because of the lockdown. We right. had saved them some money, and I was like, I was already sick and tired of of, of riding public transport. Um, interesting for the first couple of years, I loved it. Honestly, I I think you know for what it is, it's a pretty. Pretty good system. You know, it's got its fuck ups, but what does it? Um, compared to most of the world, I think. It's, it's, I think the worst part about public transportation in New York, from an outsider's perspective, because I don't take it, but the handful of times I have, it's all the people. Yeah, that yeah. are on it. That's yeah, correct. You yeah, because you just exactly. got to deal with all the fucking all the craziness. Exactly, and the craziness does happen. Yeah. So you know, during that time, everything was locked down, and we felt trapped. We were like, we're going to take road trips, and so we bought a car. And that's exactly what we started doing. And now that I'm comfortable, you know, doing the commute, I mean, I couldn't have it any other way, to be honest with you. And uh, there's a little bit of a system. There's some tricks to driving around. You just need a lot of patience. uh, And you need to just know these, like, spots that you got to drive by. That you can park. Yeah, that I can park. And just, I do these, like, quick little routes. Yeah. Got a little system. But it works out. It's, It's a pain in the dick, but... Yeah, we do the same thing, but like in downtown, like I have, there's one or two restaurants and bars that I go to on a, on a regular. So it's like there are places you know that you can usually find parking. And there's other yeah. nights where I, I can't find parking, I'm like, fucking, I'm not going to. I'm just, I don't feel like driving, I don't feel like walking four blocks to just go out and have a couple of drinks, you know? The crazy thing I just heard about the city, too, is since I've been working down there, they got rid of some of the spots because of bus lanes. So now you can't park in the street because of the bus lanes. Oh, yeah. Then they got rid of more spots where they have. Uh, the the city bikes you can rent a bike park it so that's, no, that's starting to happen oh, yeah, there's just... more all right 
then COVID happened and now all the restaurants have their, their seating out on the streets, yeah. taking more spots away. Yeah. Now what they're doing is they don't want people putting their garbage bags out in the street on garbage day, so they're taking more spots away so you can put garbage bins in the street. Oh so they're taking away more spots. So the bins take up more. Yeah. Fuck. I, it, it, it always drives me crazy with stuff like that with cities, especially owning a business because it does fuck with not only you, but all of your clients. Because yeah. when clients know they can just roll into the city and just park really close and go exactly. and get the tattoo and then bounce. It's a lot easier to want to go to that shop. 100%. Yeah. So, absolutely. You know. Um, so when you both worked in the sh- in, in the shops before you moved into Manhattan, like um, how like you, you were I don't want to say hometown heroes, but you had your own clientele. How much of that clientele followed you in New York? Zero. I followed you into Manhattan. Zero. Yeah. So uh, that's zero. Half, <laughs> less than half. Less than half. Less than again, half. I think with yeah, Burroughs the neighborhoods exactly yeah. and yeah. also like you know there was uh there was a bit of a price difference you know when you do jump neighborhoods like that but for me it wasn't enough to warrant like like it's almost like i almost felt like what do you mean if, like your hourly rate jumped yeah but not by much you know so um, that's another thing at that, that, at that yeah, time that i wanted to touch on is how how dramatic was the change in right. for me i'm gonna be honest with you i it wasn't that dramatic because i was like you know i was thinking about my clients and I'm like, you know, I don't want to like jump up too much on them and like sacrifice too much because I do appreciate my clients. It's it's what keeps us going. Um, but jumping over to Manhattan, I noticed that maybe even that jump, people thought I was inaccessible. Right. And it's and it's just a bridge away, you know, and that kind of sucked. But eh, it's all right. I, well, I had seen something like that from Mike Ledger when he moved into Manhattan um, after he'd left Peter Tattoo. And the biggest issue we had was all of the Long Island clients were like, yeah, we're not going there. Like, so they, they immediately find to the next couple of, you know, artists. And Ruben Dahl was one of those guys that was coming up at that time. Yeah. So it was almost like, and then nothing against Mike, it was almost like he just stepped right into, you know, oh, look at all this great, you know, all these clients. Yeah. Uh, and it, it bummed me the fuck out because it's like, how would you not go to Manhattan? Because like at that point, when I got my sleeve started, my, my lower arm started done by him. I was going to New York adorned. And again, coming from Long Island, it, it's a pain in the ass. Like, I don't want to leave the island either, but I'm going to go there to get tattooed by this fucking guy. Right. There were people that were regulars of his for a long time that were just like, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to I saw it now. happen. So, <clears throat> Oren Hurley was like the guy in Rockland County to get right. tattooed by. And he was by far blowing everybody out of the water. When he moved down to the city, I started tattooing all his clients because nobody wanted to get tattooed so, by exactly. him. I was like, I, I mean, I felt honored in one way. I felt bad in another because I was like, man, like I can't compare myself to this guy. I don't, I don't want to finish his work or anything right. like that. So like, it, but I saw it happening, and I, I, I knew if I moved into the city, this is going to happen to me too. And sure as shit, it happened to me also. But then how did you bounce back from that? Was it so with the pricing thing? It was funny. Is at that time I was charging one fifty an hour in Rockland County, and all the guys at No Idols were two hundred and above. Right, and. I didn't want to make that big jump from 150 to 200. Right. Because my clients in Rockland are used to 150. Right. So uh, I justified it. I was like, all right, you know, I'm going into the city. It's going to cost me a little bit more parking and tolls and all that. But I don't want to screw you guys over. I'll just go to 160. So I did, uh, I think I had one appointment. My first appointment that was in No Idols was supposed to be at uh, my old shop. Okay. He followed me. That was the only guy. Fuck. So <laughs> wow. once I realized that nobody from Rockman was coming to No Idols, I was like, well, I'm going to start fresh anyway. 200. 200 an hour. Good for you. That's yeah, because at that point, there's nobody there's nobody that knows any better. Right. You know what I mean? Like, So yeah. when I moved from New York to, to New Hampshire, I went to work with Corey Kruger, and I was 100 bucks an hour when I left. But I had been tattooing. That's what it was in 2099. You know, and when I went up there, Corey was two buck fifty, and he was like, "No, man, you got to start charging more." And I'm like, "Dude, my clients are traveling. <laughs> I mean, I got people coming up. From, dude, it was crazy when I moved to New Hampshire. I had people coming up from Queens. I'm like, what the fuck? Are you wouldn't come get tattooed by me when I was on Long Island? Yeah, now you've got to drive two and a half hours, and you're cool with that? And they're just like, oh, it's just it's a nice drive. For them, <laughs> it was like getting out of the city. <laughs> it's, it's like, like I'm going to country for the weekend. Cool. All right, cool, whatever. And that's when I jumped up to buck fifty. Yeah. You know? But when I came it's here. And eventually made the, the jump to 200. I still had, I mean, I had clients that I've been tattooing for 15, 20 years. And I'm like, you know what? We'll just keep the other at 200, at 150 bucks an hour. And they're fine. But they're like, some of them are only, t- now, a lot of them are dead, fucking just gotten old. They're done They're, they're done getting tattooed or just, they're done getting tattooed, you know? Yeah. So a lot of those people aren't, they just disappeared. I'm not tattooing nearly as many of those people anymore. I 
I do a couple of them. I think one or two I tattoo like maybe once a year. So, wow. mm. yeah, you know, it was a blessing in disguise because now I, the people that I was tattooing in Rockland didn't follow me. I didn't have to do many of their like tattoos I didn't really want to do anymore. Right. It was a nice clean start. So that's another thing I wanted to ask. When you were there, you were the street shop guy. You were doing whatever came through the door. Like I'm assuming you were the same thing in Brooklyn, you know. Um, when you came to the city, was it then that you started kind of refining what you were doing? And it was was it because you wanted to, or it was because that's what people were expecting of you when you came to the, when you went to that shop? I don't think anybody expected anything of me. So I, I kind of had to develop something and make a name for myself. Right. So. Um, I think, when was this, 2016-ish? So Instagram's been around for a couple of years. I think that, that's when I really started to realize that I could show my work and show what I want to do and kind of create somewhat of a name for myself. And, and then Neo Tribe was the, what, 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 what drew you to it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when you were working, like, what made you, what, like, how did you pick No Idols? Like, because in the beginning, it was, it was John, uh, uh, Dave, right? Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, Dave, uh, and, and Earth Will Rasper? Uh, Penchoff, John Penchoff. Penchoff. Oh, okay. Penchoff. Oh, I didn't know. He, to be honest, I didn't know that. I know Many people. Was he was kind of like a silent partner. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Okay. He was there in spirit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. He was there <laughs> on the uh, grand opening, and I think the one year anniversary. And that okay. Was like, oh, wow. Okay. So maybe, I, maybe he, he, he was supposed to, like, the plan was he was going to be coming to and from, right? Yeah, so when I first got hired, I was, I was the only guy hired there. Who wasn't an owner? Okay. So it was it was John, Dave, Penchoff, and Matt Buck. Yeah, they never worked it out. Yeah, yeah. And then I think they they came in in like March of 2016, June of 2016. They hired me as a regular artist. Right. And then officially the shop opened in July of 2016. Oh, okay. And uh, when I came in to start setting all my stuff up, there was a really nice spot in front of like a brick wall part of the shop. And I was like, oh yeah, I want that. And then the other guys, Jonathan wasn't there. He was out in Denver at this point. And they're like, oh no, that's Penshaw's spot. I was like, all right, well, where is he? When's he coming? He's like, ah, he's going to be coming back and forth. I'm like, okay. So I set up the next station over and like three weeks go by. I was like, is this guy coming or what? And I'm like, nah, I don't think so. It's like, I don't want to be a dick. Like, that's <laughs> a really nice spot. <laughs> yeah. I like the brick, you know? But, but how did you meet him? How did you meet, uh, how did you meet the fellas? So, I got tattooed by Dave a couple of times. Okay, that makes sense. Right? And uh, when they were looking for somebody to come in as a, an artist for the shop, they put, some, they put something on their Instagram, like everybody individually. I don't think the shop had an Instagram at that time. Dave put something on that they're looking for an artist. And I replied to it, not as like, oh, hey, I want to be part of the, the team. I just like generically, oh, that, that's cool. That's a cool opportunity. Right. And I wasn't thinking anything of it. And then a couple of days go by and then Dave messages me he's like hey dude you know would you want to come on and he was saying that the people who did apply for it the guys weren't really digging right so he like personally asked me to come and i was like all right i guess i could i wasn't planning on it i had a good thing going i had a good clientele right where i was i was i was booked for a couple of months and uh i told him i was like all right you know i could i can come in but i got to let me tattoo all the people that I have booked here in Rockland. Because I knew they weren't going to come down to the it's city. like, yeah, let me make, let me get this out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was basically, uh, in the, I didn't know any of the other guys. I only knew Dave. Right. Now, how did, now how, how did you get in there? Oh, how do I remember? Okay, so I think by this time, it's uh, you fast forward a little bit, and Dave had left No Idols. And by and, a little bit, like two months. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it was yeah. quick. <clears throat> the spot opened up. I think No Idols had made a post of like, hey, artist wanted or one artist needed. And I responded to it. I think I messaged uh, John because I knew him at the time. Right. And I was like, hey, man, you know, I'm just like, I'm leaving this shop over here and I uh, would like to come and work in the city, you know. Any let chance of it. What you think. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me know if the spot's open, if it interests you, if, if I could, if I fit the team. And he ended up, you know, responding pretty quickly and be like, yeah, come on down. No, no, the same thing. Like when you were working in Brooklyn, were you kind of like jack of all trades? Yeah. And then moving into Manhattan, did that, did that refine itself at all? Cause you're more, it the, did. you're more the traditional guy. Yeah. Yeah, it did. I was doing, I was doing, um, and I can still do a little bit of everything, but I was definitely doing like everything that came through the door. 
um, when I got to Manhattan, I definitely saw a shift in, you know, me being able to focus on like doing my version of like traditional and right. even delving a little into the Japanese traditional as well, okay. which is where like, I would say like most of my artistic like joy comes from. Right. You know? like, just, I mean, just the idea of doing something traditional is right. like, it's... Fuck, the thing I've noticed is the older I'm getting is, and the, the more I see my work coming back, well, I'm proud. It's like, oh, I'm about to put, to put together a new portfolio to put out and stuff and, and on the table and stuff. And looking at the work from, fuck, 18 years ago to today, you know, um, that's on the computer still. And seeing how dramatically some of my stuff has changed, a lot of it is do due to age and just not being able to tattoo the same way. And I know that sounds weird, but... Oh, so you're 30. saying 18 years of a decline? Is that what you're saying? It's not 18 years of a decline. Just seeing the work that I did back then compared to how I'm thinking now about tattoos. Yeah, okay. And the reason why I say that is because I do break my stuff down in a, different, in a different way than I used to, you know? And it's part of it is because I know I'm going to have a harder time tattooing that way. And I miss it. Like, I do stuff like I'm like... Man, I remember when we used to have like five color blends and something and like two light sources and silly <laughs> shit like that. But wait, why can't you do it? It's a combination of things. A, I see stuff come back and I'm a little disappointed in it. Okay. And I want it to, I want it to, when, like, when, when you look at a traditional tattoo that's 20 years old. I know what you're going to talk about, yeah. There's not a lot of change. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> and, and there's something when you're a tattooer, you look at it, you go, man, I want my stuff to kind of age like that and not necessarily age like this. Because yeah. if you right. think about it, some new school stuff and some out-of-the-box stuff when you look at it we have to explain our stuff aging in the way that the color realism guys do mm -hmm. if, you, if that makes sense yeah, it, does. I mean, oh. it does it's not gonna look like just an old tattoo it's gonna look like a different age tattoo yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah I also I tattoo differently it's harder now to to pull super long lines I mean I, I was always known for doing tight threes and tight fives and and very intricate line work. And now it's like, I, yeah, I still find myself going that direction, but now I'm like, dude, yeah. why don't you cut back on some of the fucking lines? Because <laughs> the band is clean and shit. They're, not sh they're pretty shaky now. So you might want to just pull back a tiny bit, you know? So it does change the way you think about stuff like that, you know? So, um, yeah, so yeah. you're saying, so now it's more of a, more of a traditional? Yeah, yeah. And trying to, I mean, <clears throat> you can only stand out so much to a traditional, um, but. Which is, a, that's, a, that's a truth. That's a definite truth. But it's also, do you find it also where people, you go to a convention and, and a lot of the shows I've been going to lately are, are heavily traditional guys. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm, I'm a square peg in a lot of cases. Um, but a lot of people are not as picky about which guy they'll go to. It's almost it's almost more about what's on their table. Yeah. You know, what's what, what they're offering in their table. Which is exactly. funny why I was surprised you guys don't have a ton of flash. I know you keep talking about it. Yeah. Like, oh we should put some flash so up. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. definitely like uh, it's definitely happening. And we're like uh, producing we're starting to produce more of it because we're seeing this shift as far as like the walk in crowd coming yeah. in. A lot of people are coming in asking for flash. Yeah. So it's it's making this like resurgence, or at least that's what we're noticing. Uh, when I was there, there coming in, yeah, there was a band. You guys had a flash. It was before you showed up. Yeah. There was a band showed up, yeah. and they were they were playing somewhere in the city. Yeah, and they were like, that's hey, right. "You guys got any flash?" And you were yeah. talking to them. Yeah. And I'm like, "How do you motherfuckers have a dust? Yeah, here you go. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, just pull out a bunch of oh, shit. Oh, absolutely. And I'm telling you, it's gonna be it's 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 coming back. I hope so. No, it's I always think fun to do that. Everybody says that things fun. go like everything is like you know goes in circles. And eventually, right. it'll come it come back around. I hope that's the case. I really truly do. Um, I think it's going to be in certain certain um, sections of the pu of the public. Certain yeah. sections of our clientele are right. going to are going to go that direction because there's always going to be the ones that want the black and gray realism because that's what's popular Agreed. on Pinterest. Yep. And the color realism because that's what they. That's what they're being inundated by, by their algorithm and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Is Tattoo Johnny still a thing? I don't think so. They were out of Jersey. No, or, no, Bullseye was out of Jersey, right? I, I think Bullseye. Bullseye was out of Jersey. I don't remember where Tattoo Johnny is from. So I, I just, that era. <laughs> so that? I just talked to somebody. That yeah. guy is out of, it's Virginia? Uh, Fuck, mm -hmm. somebody just talked to that guy about buying originals or copies or something. Fuck, I, can wish, I wish I could remember the story. But there was something about that guy who I think is still around. I don't want to say he's dead. He might be dead. And if you are and you see this or you're not and you see this, I apologize. Yeah. 
Um, and if you are dead, then, you know, God bless you. Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your Thank you for your But yeah, his name came up in a, in a thing. Ta- yeah, Bullseye, I remember, was out, of, uh, yeah. was out of there. And then the guy who designed uh, all the, uh, whatchamacallit, the Cherry Creek stuff. Oh, right. His name popped up again also for the same, for the same reason, because he's still kind of like out there doing mm-hmm. stuff. Okay, Adam, do me a favor. There's a bottle of, if you guys want to stick with whiskey, well, and again, course. I'm not forcing you guys to drink. No, no, we're here. But dude. I think we're I'm here. about to wind things up, and this is going to. You think I didn't drive over here with, without the knowledge of, <laughs> of that, what's going to happen? <laughs> um, the bottle of pepper, the old pepper, right there. Yeah, that's good. We're just gonna. I don't want to have to stop in the middle of this because I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna turn shit up a little tiny bit. Heck yeah. Um, yeah, we got issues. Or I got issues. I'm not saying, I'm not dragging these guys into the same thing. All right, we um, a lot of issues with All right, so enough. Do you feel there's anything else that you want to say about yourself and your particular position and where you're at now? No. We will touch on that again later on. Yeah. But I want to talk about not so much the politics of tattooing, but a little bit of the uh, of the, the weather, the, the, the where we're at right now. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you down with that? Yeah, cool. definitely. All right. So, I would normally say this is like a trigger word for me, but it's technically, it's I, I, it's just a fucking phrase. Books fucking closed. We don't see that nearly as much anymore. Oh, like, yeah. Ooh, you're right. I it, you know, that. It's like, you, uh, you don't see it. I mean, there's, a, there's still a handful Correct. that they don't necessarily say books closed, but they say, oh, I'm opening my books for the month of, you know, November through January, or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. We're not seeing nearly as much of that. No. And these are people that will be the first ones to tell you, it's like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm fucking busy. Right. You know, what do you think, wh- how do you think things are changing? Like, where do you think that people are, like, how, how are artists thinking about it? And how are clientele, how are our clients thinking about that? Are you saying, like, just the term books closed? Or just- the, the, the idea that books closed and whether or not they think, oh, maybe I can just get in with these people. Or maybe because they're not saying anything, right. like, they're just done. They're just, they're not opening up books, their books at all. You know what I mean? We're not getting nearly, like, before, it was yeah. just, people were just <clears throat> announcing books closed. Yeah. yeah. Now, you don't see that anymore. I feel in a healthy economy, you know, you can boast something like that. And even then, you know, it's it's a very small percentage. And this is this is I hold like this is something that I wholeheartedly like think is the truth. I think it's a very small percentage of tattooers that are like booked over a year, two years. And I think uh, more more you know the most people that put books closed or say oh it's like a three month span you know and they'll. Close right. the books, open them again, and right. it's kind of well, like Well, that's what I'm saying. You are, seeing, you are seeing that, where you're seeing people pop stuff up, but they're not making a point in telling everybody that they're not available anymore because when they get those cancellations, I think they want to keep people aware that, hey, man, you mm-hmm. might get in. Exactly. You might get lucky. Exactly. Because books mm-hmm. closed to me is just like, ah, the gates are closed. I'm fucking you. done. Yeah, I'm you know? done. And shoot, I don't know. I don't know if I ever want to project that image, especially when, when uh, you know, I feel like right now we're... Even people with appointments, everyone's feeling the hurt because, right. you know, along with this come like more cancellations, more, you know, even if people have left deposits from like a year ago, let's say. Right. So, exactly. Oh, yeah. So, like mean, there's a lot of spots to be filled on the. Oh, I've got, I've got people that have been rolling their deposits. I mean, that money's gone as far as I'm concerned. But I still have the wrong of the deposits. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, I've got people that have got uh-huh. deposits from fucking, I may only see the person once or twice a year, but we still honor the deposit. You know? Yeah. My first hand experience with it. I tried to see like let's 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 see what this books closed thing does. Is it does it create any kind of like uh, scarcity, excitement, scarcity? Demand. Yeah, demand, yeah. whatever. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> so I did a test and I did books closed. If you want to get on a waiting list, email me, give me your information, I'll throw you on the waiting list, and then when I open my books, I'll contact you. Don't be surprised if you get a phone call in three weeks. <laughs> right, right. Whatever. I, it wasn't really that long. I think it was maybe a month. And uh, I had a couple of people get on the waiting list. They were all very excited. I was like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to get tattooed by you. A month goes by. And I'm not even kidding. Everybody on that list, when I emailed them, goes to me. So they were ready to make an appointment a month ago. But now that my books are open, could nowhere to be found. All right. Well, now to shit on clients a little bit. Uh, that's a big issue. Yeah, second people are just like, oh, no, I want to get tattooed. I've got to get tattooed. I can't wait to get tattooed. Cool. When can you come in? I got my fucking schedule in front of me right now. And they're the first ones to be like, oh, well, you know, I got a, I got a thing. And blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I got a couple things. It is one of those situations where I'll post something on Instagram and I will have people from Australia, 
from fucking Spain. Oh, I wish I lived closer from Miami, whatever. Everyone comes. Oh, from I wish I lived closer. Coming out of the global Here's woodwork. Idea. Don't fucking talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. I do, I'm glad you like me. Yeah. Give me a like. Give me a thumbs up. But I don't want to hear you get tattooed by me if I was in your fucking home state. Yeah. Or right. if you live closer to here. Right. It is aggravating. All the clients out there who do that, just so you fucking know. It, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I fucking hate it. I hate it. Yeah. I it's hate cool. it. It's wishy washy. <laughs> like, come on, guys. So, do you think there's any. The, so, what do you think is going to be. It's fun to. It's nice to hear you say that you experiment with that because of the idea that you're never going to know unless you try. Right. Yeah. You know, so, is there anything else like that that you've, you've fussed around with as far as like. Um, trying to bait people like i've done the thing where someone said if there's not a face in the real the, the algorithm's going to pass you up so you got a lot of these people that's what the excuse is right for a lot of these women that are and again I, that sounds fucking whatever um they're in a, they're posing in front of the mirror before they fucking they you know go through the whole rigmarole of taking the stencil off mm-hmm. and doing the thing and then you see 15 seconds you know you see five minutes five seconds of a, of a stencil five seconds of a tattoo but you saw 15 seconds of her posing yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, sexiness is a is a tool. Everybody knows it, and you know a lot of women are going to use it for sure. Especially a lot of female tattoo artists that I've seen. Especially, I mean, we've all seen it on Instagram. Where obviously there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of female tattooers that are strictly about their work. You know, their aesthetic as a person has not. It, it's, they're very focused. You on don't ever work. see anything but the actual work. You're not right. seeing. You're not, you're, you're, you're seeing even very little I mean, social Exactly. Stuff. Aside from a couple like stories here and there, yeah. few and far between, yeah. you know, well, I just, and then obviously you'll see the, you know, the dolled up ones showing literally yeah. everything. Oh, we, we were, we yeah. were down in, uh, we were down in uh, uh, Virginia and someone, I, I'm not going to say who it was, sent me a, a picture of like a flyer from the Richmond convention. It was these two girls that are two women that are looking for a client tattoo. And the photograph of them in this very nice, nicely prepped advert was them in lingerie. Nothing. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there going. was pictures yeah. below that of what they do. They're like, let's go straight for the gristle. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> exactly. And I, I had a client. I had, well, I had a, a, someone who watches the show. And he was like, oh, you need to get a couple of women on there and talk to them and ask them what they think about the fact that, you know, they're, you know, they're just fresh out of an apprenticeship and they're busier than guys who've been tattooing in the shop for 25 years. What is their impression on that? I was just like, dude, having said it, I'm yeah. not the fucking guy to have that that conversation <laughs> because I'm going to be looked at as like, hey, you're just a dick. You're just a misogynistic asshole. I am not. I mean, I will admit I'm very, you know, bold and forefront, but I'm not, I don't consider myself a misogynist. Same, Joe. I mean, if I see, if I see, you know, Let's say a duck walking in front. I'm gonna be like, "That's a duck." <laughs> you know, I will point out the obvious. Edge. Well, the reason why I bring up the algorithm thing and the face thing is like, when I went to came back from Richmond, I, there was video of me tattooing, and so I made a point: show the picture of the, the client, show the picture of me tattooing, show you know. Yeah. You try to have this interactive thing. Obviously, I'm not gonna pose in front of a fucking mirror. Sorry, um, but the idea is you do try these things. It didn't do a fucking thing. It doesn't, I think it's just, and again, no offense to anybody, sex sells. You know what I mean? Well, that's 100%. And and guys in this industry, clients and tattooers, they tend to lean into, oh, I don't want to get tattooed by a woman. You know? They're always going to be more comfortable, like even both male and female. Do you think there's a difference between now and say 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when it wasn't cool to get tattooed by a woman? Because I just had uh, Amory from Canada say, when she first got into tattooing, People were hesitant to get tattooed by it because she didn't look like the stereotypical big boobs, big chest tattoo. Like she was a very, she's an attractive girl, yeah. but she doesn't fit the picture of what maybe some guys think of as like a female tattooer. Right. How was her work though? Beautiful. Like okay. she's fucking amazing. Like yeah. I don't know mm-hmm. her person. I now I do because we met. Um, I knew Christina, uh, who owns Black Rabbit up in, in outside of Vancouver. Um, and they were in Richmond together. So I made a point in reaching out to Christina again because I last time I'd seen her was when I tattooed her, I think, years ago. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I'm going to be in Richmond. I'd love to sit with you guys. And uh, I didn't say you guys. I said her. But I knew Anne Marie was there as well. And she was like, hey, you know, I've never done a podcast. And I'm like, hey, if you guys want, the two of you can do it. And she was just like, oh, I was going to ask that. And I'm like, perfect. Let's do that. Cool. And I got that was my introduction to Anne Marie. Her mm-hmm. stuff is fucking gorgeous. I'm not going to pronounce her last name. Because she didn't want to pronounce her last name. It's very fucking French. <laughs> um, so, it, but she was the podcast. They were the podcast from two two weeks ago. So, okay. I would do yourself a favor. 
check out both their work. They're both tremendous artists, phenomenal artists. You know? Yeah, so my brain always goes towards, are you not getting clientele because you're not showing your tits or are you not getting clientele because your work sucks and nobody wants to get tattooed by you? Well, but the, I think what this, what this fellow was trying to allude to is the fact that even the ones who aren't good, we're talking fresh out of an apprenticeship, yeah. are being are busier than most of the guys in the shop. Right. Yeah. And again, um, my personal belief is in certain places, yeah, a lot of it has to do with the with the, who's doing the tattoo, not necessarily the quality of the tattoo is being correct. Made. But the same thing could be said, in my opinion, with other shops. There are certain shops that are bit that are busier because the location, which I think Manhattan is a big deal, has a big deal, a lot to do with that, depending on your location. That could make you a very busy shop. Yeah. Um, the, the, the the people that work there, maybe some of them are kind of rock stars. Oh, I travel a lot. I'm actually in a band, and I only work here, you know, once a month or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's different draws that that I think attract individuals. Like, you know, Kings Avenue is a perfect example from New York. Like they start on Long Island. This is a Ruben Dahl shop, mm -hmm. dude. It's a fucking. But again, it's a powerhouse of tattooers. There's guests coming from all over the world to yeah. work in that shop. So that obviously has its own draw. You know, but I think in certain cases, sometimes it is the fact that of the it's the the allure of the individual who's sitting who's sitting opposite you doing the tattoo. Yep. You know. Yeah. So having not wanted to bring up the subject, what are your thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, to add to that, also like <clears throat> a lot of the realization I came is that social media as a tool, and just like the younger generations, the one before us. Uh, like fresh out of their apprenticeships, they are, I feel like they're, they've got a good grasp on how to create that like image to attract. Uh, and a lot of it is faking the funk. They're just creating a social media image right. of a lifestyle that might not necessarily be their lifestyle. Right. But, you know, it's attracting, you know, said clientele. Just like when we talk about this, like, uh, like we imagine we'd like to say that over the years you know our work is good you know we have reputations and then all of a sudden you'll see somebody that's doing this like that new style that they're calling which is basically like high-end scratching oh, uh, cyber, cyber, cyber sigilism, sigilism. yeah oh, fuck and i mean they're and then be like books closed you know yeah you know on those guys and you're left scratching your head but it's uh you know it's it's, it's wild. It's frightening. And that's, yeah, it is wild. that's the it's thing wild. that drives it's me wild. crazy with it's wild. a lot of the direction that this business has gone in, um, in the sim simple fact that, you know, it's algorithms that are drawing it, that are driving it. It's oh, absolutely. places like Inked Magazine, which is a fantasy land mm -hmm. of, of tattooing in a sense that um, they're bringing all these amazing artists in from Korea, from all these places, and they're doing these tattoos that are almost unrealistic to be done, to be created. Yeah, and we all know and have an idea of how some of this stuff is going to age and change, um, but the client doesn't because they get these really pretty, like I said, these fantasy versions in print and on their computers, right? And they see that, and that's all they ever see because they never maybe they live in the Midwest or maybe they live someplace where that doesn't exist at, at all. all. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Like, how how do you how do we I mean, there's no fighting it. Obviously, it just exists, you know. But I mean, how, does it burn your ass that that's how that's how people are viewing our, our business right now? Or? Honestly, I, I try to just not you even let it, it. Yeah, I mean, God, I wish let them could. do their know, thing. It's hard to. I think the thing that drives me crazy is because I'm not busy. If I were busier, I'd probably be able to have an easier time. Yeah, drawing it's true. Time. You'd be just completely. Um, you just, um, you know, your attention is focused on that. I'm just. Right taking care of your work and just staying busy. But yeah, I mean, like I said, it's like, I feel like technology is, you know, I'm not going to say technology. I'm going to say the algorithms right. are really hindering us in a way where it's like, it's just like, imagine, you know, we're being fed whatever, whatever it thinks we want to see. Because of, okay, because of how you're scrolling. Right. Pretty but much. the thing is that even, even if us human beings, we like, we do patterns and we're very pattern-esque. Um, when we're looking for new things, like we intentionally look for those things. So when we have all of this algorithm that's constantly feeding us other interests, it's almost like we stay busy with it. So we don't go out of our way to look for what we really want. Right. Exactly. Um, and I feel like it's like the same as like, uh, you know, equate that to real life. If I want to go like, 
let's say to the magazine section and I go, oh, I want a tattoo section, but the bookshelf has a mind of its own and it's going to be like, uh, oh, no, nope. we'll switch yeah, all these things everything around, around, shift everything. Ah, uh, here's other, yeah. other stuff. Cause we're all from a generation that would go to the bookstore at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. And then you would go directly True. to the section that you knew the fucking magazines were at. Maybe you got your coffee before, maybe you got it after, yeah. but you knew exactly where you were going. And right. you may, there might be eight or 10 copies of a magazine, you're just flipping through them and you may walk away with five of those magazines because yeah. you've already kind of flipped through most of them. You know? Exactly. That that's Those are days that I kind of miss because at least there was some kind of like outside interaction. You're not just Same. sitting in your toilet being like, Ooh, yeah, you know? exactly. So yeah. I got I to gotta write that down for later. I got to remember that, you know? Yeah. So yeah. as much you know, as much as people like to blame the algorithm, though, and I'm I'm not like a holier than now on this because I think no, this also, that's why I want to talk but, to you guys about yeah, of course um, we, we all we're all gonna have different opinions on. It. I I think people like to blame the algorithm when it's not in their favor. In reality, yes, you have to work at it to trick the algorithm or do what it wants you to do. But if you do the right things and you're consistent with it, you will get seen. It's just, it's a lot of work that people don't want to do. So here's the thing with that. And the reason why I bring that up is because of what you just said. People have been like, I'm fucking dead. I'm not doing anything. I'm attached to you in four days. And this isn't me saying, this is me talking to other people that are saying it to me. And the first thing the shop owner or someone they work with says, well, did you post today? And the most infuriating thing you can hear from your coworker. Did you feed the machine? You work for exactly. Yeah. Did you post today? And it's like, motherfucker, I've been posting every fucking day like a machine. And nobody is paying attention. Turn on your TV. Now mm -hmm. let's go back 15, 20 years and there was actual commercials. Okay. If there was a really funny commercial or an engaging commercial, you're going to sit there and watch it. Almost certainly. If it's a boring commercial or something that doesn't interest you, you're going to change the channel. Yeah, you're going to flip through. Right? So if you're if you're posting every day, but the content isn't there and it's not making... Yeah, see. then they're not going to... So, but, so now this, this is a perfect example because there's a million fucking memes coming out about this. It's like, oh, all the tattooers were complaining about the fact that now they have to be entertaining to be on Instagram. Right. Yep. It is a bitch. Yeah. And that's the old man in me just being like, you know what, man? Fuck you guys. Yeah. You want a fucking dog and pony show? Go to the yeah. circus. Before Instagram, who did you have to compete with? The guys in your shop and the few tattooers in a the local there area? There was a right? lot more back in the day. There was a lot more word of mouth. Which is still a solid, you know, that's the one thing whenever I do something on, on your podcast and it goes fucking viral because you pick the, the, yeah. the most horrible things that I say or your fucking whatever AI no, thing you're that's using. That's all me. Prick. Um, <laughs> um, dude, it, it showed up on another guy's. Like, me. this guy only ever talks about tattoos. He actually is taking a shot at me because of things I said. I'm like, go oh, fuck yourself, dude. At least I have an opinion. Right. Um, the, <laughs> um, the, the point being is it's like the idea to have to be that, that entertaining, it's just, it, it is aggravating. You know, there is nothing better in my opinion than, uh, than word of mouth, but word of mouth doesn't cut it anymore with a lot of people. Like there will be people that literally I'll do a full sleeve on and everybody will be like, oh my God, that's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, you got to see this guy. You got to check this guy's work out. Here's his card. And then they will go to a, club, a local shop next to them and get banged up and not think any different than what the, they think that is as good as what they had seen. Mm -hmm. And they're not willing to take that chance on word of mouth, which is infuriating. It is. And, it is. You know, and um, I think the backup with that was when you had magazines and you made it into the magazines. It said a lot. So that, that was a big deal because yeah. magazines, it, and again, I understand that magazines was the social media of, of, of the day. Right. Uh, from back in the day. And there was only so much space. And therein lies, I think, the biggest issue is that people are just inundated with so much information yep. that it's it's difficult to really kind of see through the shit. You know? And the, another big difference is that, you know, back to faking the funk, and I'm not saying that everybody's doing this. It's just like now with technology and the and us being able to individually put our portfolios on, on the web, on, on Instagram, on social media. Is that, you know, there really is no control on like, because in the magazines, what we're doing, like us artists, we were sending in our photos. Exactly. So there was glare. There was like a tattoo, looked like a tattoo. Sometimes it even had a little bit of like, a, you know, a, a lubricant on it. Right. But I mean, for the most part, and then you have now, and the magazines would post it as is. I mean, I'm sure they would help it out. A little I think it was, the, it was the difference between like the nudie mag of like, 
Wii magazine from back in the day yeah. to like Playboy. Right. Like these girls are just, this is fucking raw. Yeah. <laughs> and this is all fucking airbrushed exactly. and this is all Photoshop yeah. and everything so else. So now we have this like being able to manipulate and doctor a lot of these images because I'll, I'll, I'll be looking at some of the work and i you know, despite the CPL filters and everything, and I'm just like, oh man, I don't know, call me crazy, but I think a lot of these lines were corrected on freaking Procreate. And it is so it's that like was a, a thing. lot of stuff, and there was an actual yeah, thing. A lot back of people were calling yeah. that stuff out, yeah. and I still think it still happens to this day. You know, effects. I mean, it's only getting better. Even even AI can like, you know, smooth things out. So for yeah, you, you know more just, about this stuff than you and John. Yeah. You 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 leaned heavily into the AI world. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. how, like, are there a lot of like things like that that are happening? Do you think? Or yeah, well, yeah. There's there's a lot of programs that you can just feed your picture into and then it'll it'll yeah, doctor it up for you yeah. i saw a hilarious photo it, it went around but the first time i saw it was on a page called the horror gallery oh, okay and uh it's a waitress and she's holding a serving platter and then the caption is something like uh how like ai detects what or how, how you can tell if AI was uh, helping this picture. Okay. And then there's like, in the background, there's like little things circled, like, oh, look, you can see this is glitched here, this is a little, little weird here. And like all these little kind of nuances in the background and everything. And the picture is her holding this platter. The only thing that's right up in front, her hands are actual feet. Oh, <laughs> so that's still a thing. Is that still happening? Because like, one wow. of the guys here did, there, there was a show uh, somewhere in, the, I think it was in the Midwest, called Pixels. And they gave everybody a little like uh, a little six by six you know panel to paint on, and he this is like this was about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. He did a picture of like the the, the creation, the two, the two fingers coming mm -hmm. together, but he did it as if it were, he as if it was AI created. Mm -hmm. So the hands, like one hand's got like God's hands, got like six fingers, and hand, one of them yeah, sprouting out of the other, <laughs> and the other one is like two hands that are like coming apart like this, <laughs> hands and they're literally coming together. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> that is. Fucking clever That's because good. I don't think anybody really thinks that way. You yeah, know I mean? right. We've yeah. often said like the whole thing when you look at uh, you know, I I complained about this how it's changing the way artists perceive what the human body looks like or what how, what a god you know oh I'm gonna do Neptune he's gonna have ninety fucking abs you know. A lot of people don't make don't take the time to make those corrections because they're just using they're going by they're going verbatim by what they see. Yeah, yeah. correct. And you know you'll hear it a hundred times that. Right now, AI is at the worst you'll ever see it. It's only going to get better. From Most certainly, yeah. And Which is frightening. Yeah, well, because it's there are things that are so well done that you can't tell if it's real or not. Right, and exactly. That's scary. Oh, yeah. Most certainly. I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, if, if Elon Musk has his way, we might be fucking hiding under the overpass waiting for the fucking... For real. ...to, to, yeah. to pass over. The red beam. But, yeah, to answer your question, there, there's Phil... I mean, without even using... I, is it AI? I don't know. You can use filters. You can use a lot of stuff to, to make your photos look a lot better than they really are, to make your tattoo work look a lot better. Um, I was going to say, have you seen the new, the, the new? Um, I'm not, for lack of a better word, scam. It's it's basically a, a group that's basically saying, never let a bad picture ruin your, ruin your career. Never let a bad picture ruin your chances of catching that next tattoo. And it's literally a group that's basically telling you what filters to buy or, or basically selling you what filters to buy, what programs to use, and how to doctor up your photos where they no longer look like a tattoo. But now it looks like a prize-winning fucking tattoo. Right. You know, where, which we all know nine times out of ten means it's not a real good tattoo. Right? Yeah. You know, so. It's only hurting the clients, I think. It is, but how often, how much, do you think the clients even realize it? I mean, some Well, do. that's why it's hurting them, because they don't realize it. And then they'll, it, it's, it, I, I like to compare it to back in the day, you used to have these, I had this happen to me. Someone will take pictures from your portfolio, mm -hmm. put it in their portfolio, and like, hey, check out my work. And then the client will come in, oh yeah, I really like your work, I'll get a tattoo from you. And then they get that, they get tattooed and it's just botched. They don't know anything, they thought that, that, this guy that was what the they guy. saw they could do, but well, they can't. So again, but how much of these, how much, if we lived in an, in an easier communicative, communicative world, people would know to not not listen, maybe not maybe be a little bit smarter on who they go to. Like we had Adam just recently, we had a client call up the shop wanting to do a walk-in. Like they were coming in the following day though. They're like, oh, can you do a walk-in? And they were asking about a name, like a little fucking name. Yeah. And one of the questions they asked was, how long has he been tattooing? Is he a competent tattooer? Now, 
I was angry as not nearly as angry as he. And by the way, you got to work on that. <laughs> Just dead stuff. Um, but he he was pissed because he's like, "Why the fuck would you ask me that question? Like, you called this fucking shop for a fucking reason. Do you honestly believe there's somebody here that can't do that tattoo?" Now, in one sense, he is right, but in the other, but in the other sense, they did their they're doing their due diligence, yeah. which is rare. Because how often you come in when someone shows you a tattoo that they want to get done and you go, no, I can't do it that small. And they were like, but the other guy did it. And they're like, well, let's see the tattoo he did yeah. on you, dummy. Mm-hmm. Like, it looks bad. And if you didn't know that, let me be the first one to explain that to you. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. So that is a big fucking deal. Yeah. You know? It so is. It, it is a double-sided sword because yeah. when, you do, when you are confronted with that person who's going to call your, you into question... It is one of those situations where it's like, well, fuck you. <laughs> it's hard to not snap, snap that. For sure. You know, for sure. Do you get a lot of that in the in the city? Where like, where, like, do you have people coming in or they're just following you guys blindly and being happy, knowing that you're there already? I think a lot of people come in I, as far as like, because I've gotten to do a lot of the walking clientele. I think for the most part, what we get is, uh, see, that's just one of the things about the city. Obviously, in the city, you'll still find like shitty shops. Oh, fuck yeah. You like, can't buy the boatload. I mean, the fact of the matter is you can't have this many shops and right. have not most of them be shaft. Right. You know? But I think like the general populace that's going around looking to get tattooed, they figure that more high quality shops are going to be in the city. Yeah. So by default, they already have like a sense of safety. Yeah. So they'll walk in and sometimes a lot of walk-ins don't even look at the portfolios. They're like, oh yeah, we have some ideas. If anything, we get people that... Uh, Try to undervalue the tattoos by being like, oh, you know, the simple word. Where yeah. Just like, oh, oh, it's really simple. Is, it's really simple. Yeah. Simple it's is sim- great. Simple, 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 simple. Yeah. Simple is great until they show up at 7.30 at night with right. a phone, yeah. phone that they got to fucking squeeze up through yeah. cruise yeah. through. So it's you know? been, it hasn't been one of those, like, uh, I feel like when I was in Brooklyn, it happened a little bit more where people would be like, where if I was talking to somebody and let's, let's say I was up. And I'd be like, oh, this and that. And, you know, like, yeah, of course I can. Yeah, we can do that for you. And, yeah, I can do those outlines. All right. Uh, is your portfolio around here? I want to I wanna see your for- portfolio. So they want to match the person that they were, you right. know, that was talking to them, sure. trying to sell them a tattoo and double checking by being like, uh, okay, you know what? Before I make, before I bite the bullet, where's your portfolio? I've had that happen a couple that's times. That's actually, sure. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Like, no, our, not me neither. Our manager doesn't want to make the choices. Me neither. Client, so she'll tell people like, hey, there's a bunch of books there. Yeah. So just look at the books and get a, get a feel for what everybody does. Do you have an order that you go by? Like who's up next for walk-ins? No, walk-ins are tough because it literally comes down to who's not working. Because I mean, for the most part, everybody's by appointment. Um, if Adam and Joe are the two newest guys and they're the two most, Adam is our workhorse. Like he's the guy It's like, if he's tattooing something right now and someone's like, hey, you know, this girl wants to come in for, you know, a little bird or a name, whatever, he'll be like, oh, I'll be done with this in two hours. Tell her cool. she'll come in then. You know, so it's nice to have somebody like that. So it's not necessarily a matter of, it's more who's capable, who's who's able to do it when when the time comes. All right. You know, we had a guy to, to what you said, we had a similar to what you said. We had a guy come in um, and uh, basically talking to Tiff, her, talk to her, her ear off at the front desk about all these ideas that he wanted to do. And Tiff's like, cool, why don't you go look at the, the portfolios and get a feel for what everybody does. He's like, well, just tell me who's the best guy in here. And she goes, yeah, that's not how it works, man. Like, you know, everybody in here is really good. You really should get a feel for what they do. You know, and everybody's books are slightly different. And you will, you know. Well, just tell me who you who, who would you get tattooed by? Who would you recommend your brother to get tattooed by? And she goes, you know what? There are two artists sitting at the bar right over there. Just go talk to them. So the guy comes over and does the same spiel to Adam. And Adam's like, cool, what kind of lettering are you looking at? What thinking about? What kind of this are you thinking about? Are you thinking about black and gray? Or are you thinking about color? You and literally the guy's just like, well, I don't know, just come up with something for me. So Adam fucking snapped and he's like, so basically I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna draw something up for you and you're just gonna fucking get it then. And the guy immediately gets pissed, gets mad, fucking goes out cursing and is complaining, then calls the shop up and gets me on the phone. And then and before this, I knew what happened because I was tattooing. Yeah. My first question was, was Adam out of line? And they were like, well, you know, Adam did get a little snappy with the guy. And I'm like, but was he out of line? Was the guy an asshole? They were like, well, the guy was an asshole. I'm like, that's all I need to know. Yeah. So when the guy calls back, immediately comes back with mad, angry, how he was talked to by one of my employees and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what the guy have to say? And I'm like, cool, man. All the only thing I can do is, is say, I apologize for the way you were treated in the shop, whatever. Um, not everybody sees eye to eye. 
And he immediately came back, whoa, if I see that guy on the street, I got a good fucking memory. And I literally lost my fucking uh, mind. And I'm like, you motherfucker, you call my shop and you fucking threaten one of my, who the fuck do you? And he hung up on me. Dude, I walked out of here so fucking yeah, angry. I'm like, I got to go. And I was at a friend in from New York. And I'm literally, I'm, I'm like, I got to go. And everybody's like, what happened? I'm like, I can't talk right now. <laughs> and we, we went out and, and, and I kind of blew my steam off. But it was one of those things. It's like there comes a point where I think the client, you know, client's always right. You're not. You're not. No. Um, <laughs> no. And it's made worse when the, when clients don't want to hear what we have to say. Right. And I think that we see. I think we deal with a lot more of that than than we ever had to. In the I mean, or, yeah. I mean, coming in from yeah, as a stranger into a tattoo shop, it's just like you know, uh, respect is both earned and given. And yes. Really, especially when you're just coming in and yeah, we're providing a service for you. Like, you know, like we're human beings too. And also, you know, some a little rougher than others, you know, and at the same time, it's just like, don't be an asshole, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, just don't simply be don't asshole. be an asshole. Just listen, be an asshole. listen to what the professionals have to say. Yeah. And I think we deal, I think, I think walking guys deal with that more than, than custom guys. Oh, absolutely. For sure. You know, I think the custom guys, uh, people came to them for a reason, yes. you know? And I think there's there's less to have to deal with. How often do you get somebody that is a, a, an insane micromanager, even as a custom guy who comes in and they know that you yeah. you are who you are, you know, how, how much do you get that? So there, there's Good. two stories that just came to mind. One of them is really recent. I was So my station is right in front of the door when you first walk yeah. in. And uh, the other day I was drawing for my client who's about to come in for his appointment. And uh, some guy walks in off the street, and immediately he's like, "Who's the fucking tattoo artist here?" And uh, so I'm sitting guys. in the front drawing. Is he like just New Yorker, like, yeah, yeah. like fucking bring it? Who's yeah. the head <laughs> on this So shit. I'm drawing, and Hermes is standing over my shoulder, like we're just kind of uh, talking. He's checking out what I'm doing, and I'm like, oh, "We're all artists. Like, what do you want?" And he's like. Uh, He's just talking about what he wants and everything. And just from his energy right off the bat, like I knew that he was super picky. He didn't want to pay a lot of money. He wanted to get tattooed right now. So now living up here, if he had driven up to the front of your shop, he either be driving a four-wheel drive jacked up Jeep or fucking pickup truck. But that right, is exactly right. exactly what we just bought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys just bought one of those? Yeah. You fucking. <laughs> yeah, he walked in with his Jeep. I drove my truck. <laughs> the fact that you both came up from New York and drove up together, you could have carpooled. I, I thought about I was like, yeah, I'm going to drive up to your uh, spot, Matt. But it's just, it was enough of a difference for us to be like, no. Nah, well, like, there is a difference right. between going to your place yeah, and this yeah. place. But anyway, Sorry. so the, this guy... I don't even remember what I was going to say. Now. You were talking about yeah, how he was super picky and like you could tell he's just... And he wanted to get tattooed right uh, He now. wanted to get tattooed right now. I had no patience for people like that. So like I was right off the bat, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm doing my thing. And Hermes, he took the wheel and he's super nice and polite and gave this guy the time of day. And the guy was just like on it, like just super hard. And they, they did their consultation. He wanted to get tattooed right now. He wanted to get his whole sleeve done. He was like, so what's going to be, 400 bucks? Oh, for fuck's sake. Like, nah, dude. It was like, <laughs> so Marie's gave him like awesome. still a really cheap price for a whole sleeve. Right. Um, and then he's like, all right, so what are we, like a couple hours? And like, Hermes is like, nah, dude, like, it's going to be many sessions. We can book an appointment for your first one. Just leave a deposit right now. We'll, we'll get it going. And the guy, he's like, nah, no, 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 no. I don't want to leave a deposit. So he's starting to walk out. Hermes like, all right, well, when you're ready, let me know. Like, still super nice. As the guy's walking out, he comes back to me. He's like, all right, he's going to draw for me. You you help him with this. I'm like, what do you mean help him with this? Like, he's a capable artist. He can do it himself. He's like, no, no, I see you drawing. I like what you're doing. Help him with that. I'm like, bro, I'm not helping him with this. If you want him to get a tattoo of you, he's going to draw it. Right, yeah. And he looked at me like pissed. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't be a part of the process. Right, his, of the process. Yeah. Of some, with this is so insulting. It is. So, again, that is – and that, the, there are those people. Like, how many people in your career have you – I hate to use the word uh, uh, fired. I hate that when people say I fired my client today. I'm like, go fuck yourself. He's paying your bills. Like you didn't fire him. You just have a, a you have a difference of opinion. Okay. But how many clients have you had to walk away from? And be like, we can't do this. Uh, you know, I follow everybody through and just hope that they never come back. So you've never done it before. No, I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At least from what I can remember, twice, where I was just like, you know what, man. I'll be honest with you. Every time I sit down with you, it's a problem, and I can't give you my best work if you're like this. Yeah. And I cut them off. And then another one was, 
I actually finished the project, but we cut ties after that, after finishing. After, yes, yeah, I've done that a bunch. Yeah, of where it's just like, hey, like I'm glad we finished, but yeah, I don't think we can, yeah, I, I can't work on you anymore. Yeah. And he, he, that same, one of those same clients even knew that he was a p- complete pain in the ass, micromanager, just yeah. like, to where, you know, they ended up giving me a huge tip at the end of the last session. Oh, they were a big they were, bottle of tequila. They were appreciative. And then they were just like, yeah, because they knew I was never coming back. But that, in a sense, was nice. That's, res- that's he, respectful. That was very respectful because he, the guy genuinely, he was like, I knew I was a pain in the ass. He understands that there's, it's a two-way street. For sure. Sense. For sure. And I still gave him a beautiful piece, but it was tough. It was a tug of war. Yeah. Like, every time. And, you know, there are those people. But I've, I've had, I just recently, literally yesterday, uh, so yeah, yesterday, my manager came in talking about, oh, this person's back on the phone. And I told her before, I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. I don't want them in the shop. I don't want to deal with them. And she was just like, what do you want me to tell them? I'm like, tell them I'm done. If they tell them that I'm not interested in tattooing anymore, that it's just too difficult to deal with. Um, if she has an issue with it, she can email me directly and I'll talk to her then. But realistically, I just don't want to deal with it. I'm not going to continue to drag shit out because it's just, I'm over it. And is this a project yeah. you started? Yeah. No, it's not even a project. She comes in and she gets, she gets like little two, three, two hour tattoo, three hour tattoo. Okay. Yeah. But it becomes an issue where it's like, like I've prided myself on not copying other people's tattoos. Right. Like if someone comes in with a fucking St. Michael, I mean, granted, St. Michael's a tough one. Which is like how many people have copied your work over the years, right? True, but that's, that makes you. Now you have to get you got to be that much more strict about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And this woman would come in, and every time she come in, she goes, "This is what I like, but you do your thing with it." And I'm like, "All right, cool." And it'd be like t- typical like West Coast style girl space. And I'm like, "All right, well, it's not my thing, but she said I can do what I want with it, so I'll kind of keep it sort of traditional West Coast, black and gray, but I'll do my thing." Do your thing. As soon as she comes in, no, nah, it's not really what I want. Because she wants this, that. I want this, and I want yeah. this, and it's before you know it. it's like. Cool, whatever. And I just fucking copy the face and fucking slightly change the background, yeah, change the good. animal head on its fucking head, and uh, and I and I feel dirty afterwards. Yeah. But the, I, I, the only reason I don't feel terrible about it is because I've seen that same fucking tattoo a million times. Exactly. Yeah. So you don't feel that guilty. Yeah. Exactly. But, but it still feels like you don't feel that guilty, but it feels cheapish. Exactly. And it then she brings bad. in another uber traditional piece and says, "Hey, can you do this? But I want to change this. I think no problem. Draw mm-hmm. it up." Same fucking thing. Comes in, doesn't get tattooed the second time because does the first time he has to come back and yeah. cancels again because they, they're sick. It was just one thing after another. Finally, she comes in, show her again. The same. I just have to copy the fucking piece. Uber traditional tattoo again. Not. It's not really. I'm sure it started out as flash somewhere, but I end up having to fucking redo this tattoo, and it, right. it bothers me because I, I feel bad that I'm copying some of these fucking work. I can say I, I don't feel as bad about it because it's a traditional tattoo, but still. Yeah. You know, it's a bummer. Is she... So, how long is your wait list right now? It's not. Dude, I got... Dude. Everybody who wants to know, I have an appointment Monday, I have an appointment Wednesday, and I have an appointment on Saturday. And technically, I would work every day. You know, it's... And the, last week, I did... T- I had I had two appointments booked. I had Monday booked, Saturday booked. I met my Monday... No showed me. I managed to yeah. score a last minute on Tuesday, but I only tattooed two days last week. Yeah, it's pretty similar. It's my scary. body as well. Because yeah. so I was going to say, it's as, it com- as it goes along for me, it's... it's okay, like I said, I, when, I, when, I met, when I joked about pulling my phone out, like I'd be in the bar and someone would just be like, they'd be talking about, oh, I need to call your shop. I need to do this. I need to go. I'm like, not cool, man. When do you want to come in? My schedule was in my fucking phone. Yeah. And, I'm ready to go. You know, some, but it's, it's shocking because some people would just be like, Are you for real? And I'm like, yeah, dude, we'll book it right now. I won't even take a deposit from you, but you fuck me, you'll never get tattooed. Yeah, you'll never yeah. get tattooed. And, and I've been very fortunate with that. Awesome. The, the ones, but I also got a lot of people that are just kind of like, oh, 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 yeah, keep your fucking mouth shut. Exactly. That's they want Don't to talk to me out. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. You're serious, you share my ear about the tattoos. You exactly. know, if you're not going to show up. And I did have another woman who came in and kind of pulled another stunt where we were working on a big thigh tattoo. And uh, I had done a bunch of, you know, not big tattoos on her, but nice size tattoos, like one and two session tattoos. This thigh tattoo was like a three session tattoo. And uh, she uh, she was like the second person I ever was like, you can't come back to the shop, I'm done. And it was one of those situations where her, her last appointment is just finishing her tattoo. She sees the bar and she's like, oh, so I can get a, I can get a whiskey? And I'm like, yeah, you can have a whiskey, no problem. I poured her a whiskey, 
put it down in front of her and she just shoots it back. I'm like, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing drives me more crazy. Right. <laughs> like when Leor was here, dude, a like a good, like, a good whiskey. Yeah. Just like, uh, uh, Leor came in here and the whiskey sitting here and it's in there for, it's sitting there for like 15, 20 minutes and he just takes it, <laughs> shoots it back. I'm like, all right, you're getting <laughs> shit next. They're like, I'm not forget, you know? Yeah. So this woman did that and then halfway through this, and it was a short session. It was like an hour and 20 minute session. She wants another whiskey. I'm like, cool. I, you know, kept a bottle of rock gut, poured that for her. She shoots that back, doesn't even notice. We do the finished tattoo and I go to charge her and she goes, I gave her the price and she looked at me and she goes, I swear to God, she made that face. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And she's like, for real? I'm like, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. I'm like, okay, cool. Have a good one. And she's like, okay, I'll call you back. I'm like, no, you're done. <laughs> and she's like, what? And I'm like, we're done. We're done. Like, yeah. you're not getting tattooed here anymore. And she goes, are you kidding me? I'm Stop like, no. Realizing. And she goes, well, I don't, I want to come, come back to the shop. I'm like, no, your business is no longer welcome here. Thank you very much. And she fucked off. She calls the shop back like two weeks, two months later. Dude, I want to come sorry. in and get a thing with Joe. Right and, Tiff, and Tiff Ooh. puts it in my book. And I knew, recognized it right away. I'm like, no, call her back. Give her a deposit back. Yeah. We're finished. And she goes, are you kidding me? I'm like, no. And dude, it, it irks me now because I'm, it's hurt, I'm hurting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I will normally take whatever comes in the door. And it's, but there's a line between like your 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 dignity and your your own respect of where where you draw the line as far it's as it's true. Goes, I, you know? I and you're right. Yeah. I, I always hate using words like that because it does come off as being very hoity toity. No, but, but you're 100. percent But right. I understand that you're 100 yeah. percent right. But it it, it, it it does burn your ass. It, it does because it still hurts. Just like you said, it still hurts. It's not like you never wanted to do that. Yeah. But there are some people that just you know it's they can't, they won't have any other way. Yeah. So, yeah. Reminds me, actually, so there was one story I, I just remembered. It was early on in my career. So maybe like 40, 50-year-old woman booked an appointment with me. She wanted to get an angel tattooed. I'm like, okay, set the appointment. She comes back in the day of her appointment. I show her the drawing of an angel. And I'm just, like, here you go. This is what we're going to do. And she's like, well, I want it to look like my daughter. <laughs> Why did you not say that? <laughs> you never told me that. What are you talking about? Um, so, I'm like, do you have a picture of me? Like, how am I supposed to know first that you wanted to look like your daughter and then what your daughter looks like? You never showed yeah. me a picture of her. She's like, oh, okay. So, she shows me a picture of her daughter in her current state. I'm like, all right, cool. I go back, change the drawing, make it look like the photo that she sent me, and then I present her the new drawing. She's like, oh, but I don't want it to look like what she looks like now. I want it to look like when she was a kid. Like, what the fuck, lady? How am I supposed to know all this? I got really pissed, like right off the bat, right then and there. And I, that was like, I didn't even want to do anymore. And I, I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm just not the right artist for this right now. And I was like, I'll, I'll give you your deposit back. I can't do this. I'm not the person for you. And she got pissed. She walked out of there. She's like, I'm going to blast this shop on Yelp. I was like, you're never going to get any more business from me or any of my friends anymore. And like, you still right, gave her the deposit back. I gave her the deposit. Which well, dude, still, we, uh, uh, yeah. I remember when some people we, just. They're, Ungrateful. We had one guy walk out of here. Like he, no, he didn't walk out. He called back because his son canceled his appointment last minute. So she's like, "All right, well, we're keeping you fifty dollars deposit. You came in yesterday, made the appointment. The, the, our manager straight up said, this is a non-refundable deposit because you're coming in today.' And he's like, "No problem." And he calls up that morning, leaves a message on the on the phone saying, "Oh, I'm sick. I can't come in." <laughs> and we're like, "Yeah, cool, whatever." Dude. So she's, <laughs> Tiff wrote him back and said, "Yeah, cool. We're, we're keeping you deposit." The father calls back. You know he's sick. But is he? He was here like nine o'clock last night. Yeah. I made the appointment last night. Sorry, it's just the way it is. It's, right. it's policy. Overnight stomach bug. But this guy comes off mad and shitty, just talking shit. And I'm like, so I literally, I'm, I'm like, I get on the phone and I'm like, I was like, can I help you, sir? And he just immediately goes off. And I'm like, here's the deal, man. If you weren't such a fucking cocksucker, you'd get your fucking kids deposit back. Yeah. But because you're a prick, go fuck yourself. Yeah. And he's like, do you know who I am? I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna wet you up, blah blah blah. Hangs up the phone. I go on Facebook. I have to go on Facebook to find out who's the guy. He's a hockey coach. All right, have fun, moms, dads, yeah, yeah. whatever. Like, give a fuck what you have to say. So Facebook for about twenty four hours. He's gonna set up some mini cones and block off your. Business. Exactly. So twenty four hours, we will lit the fuck up on. Fa- I'd never go to shop like that. Blah blah blah. Oh, we don't want your fucking business, yeah. you de- degenerate. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. You know. But it, it's funny. I think. One thing I've said is like COVID kind of turned the tables on the clients. Like if you went to a restaurant after COVID and you got shitty because of something has changed. Yeah. Restaurant tours now have an opportunity to be like, hey, do me a favor. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? You can call fucking... And I, my big thing is, we got a bad Yelp review, whatever. Like, I don't give a shit. If that's going to be what you're going to go by, I can't I can't control that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know... Who really looks at that anyway? A lot of yeah. people believe that. Do they really? Most Absolutely. of the people that come here don't come from the fact that we've been around for 20-something years. They come here because of our Google story. Google. Yeah. That's different. Well, no, true, true. Yeah. But but Yelp does. Yeah. I mean, I still go to run. I still, if I go out of town, I st- I'll still I'll still yeah. Yelp reviews. Yeah, still people. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I look at a bunch of different reviews. I'm not just following one thing. But I do try to. It is an easier way because it's it is a bigger. I don't know. We all do. When we're not yeah. familiar with something. I feel like Yelp reviews are only the people who want to leave bad reviews. I don't, well, think, certain, I don't think I've ever seen a good Yelp. You know what? Like the Facebook <laughs> for food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong there. You're not wrong there. Oh. Um, um, so yeah. one of the things, and this is a good, <laughs> good something to jump into, is one of the one of the funny phrases I've used over the years and friends have used over the years is, you know, sometimes you make art and sometimes you make money. Yeah. And being in a street shop, that is, that's the bread and butter. You know that's what I mean? Right. It's not always about doing great tattoos. Right. I mean, I shit, I don't take photos of probably three quarters of the tattoos I do because it's not something I want to be known for doing. It's a solid tattoo. It's not, I don't. Do a good tattoo, right? Does this mean we're not doing a good job? I mean, first of all, how many fucking mm-hmm. you know uh, uh, archangels and fucking yeah. godheads and stuff can you fucking put online? Right. You know, um, so it's it's not it's 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 about more it's more about making money. There comes a point where it's like, yeah, I, I, this is what I do for a living. Yeah. Like to me, tattooing is a fucking job. You know what I mean? You can call yourself a tattoo artist or you can call yourself a tattooist. Same. What do you consider yourselves? Like, are you a tattoo artist or are you a tattooist? Or is it? It, does it matter the, inf- the 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 timing in the moment? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's for sure. Not yeah, 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 that's for sure. No, absolutely. Like the timing where I'm at right now, I'm a tattooer that happens to dabble in tattoo artist, <laughs> dabble in art. Yeah. So I'm a tattooer first and foremost. Like every, when I first got into tattooing, I never thought of myself like. Oh, I'm gonna be a Michelangelo in my own bracket of tattooing. I just wanted to tattoo people because I thought it was badass. Right. I think we all did. Yeah, and and you know, you know that little kid, that little tattooing kid inside of me is still there. So right. I still get excited when I have to go outside my box and you know do some praying hands or do something and just like really like up the stokage for a complete stranger that's not my regular. Right. And I still I still get a kick out of it. Like you still have a bar that you're gonna go over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I consider myself a tattooer um, right now, in the moment. In the moment, yeah. Especially yeah. considering the the, the, the the particular time. Where... Absolutely, yeah. What about you? I'm a tattoo artist. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> nah, man. Because I feel like if I had like a little like beret, I'd put it on. <laughs> no, you know why? Though? Um, I am fortunate enough right now. That I'm still tattooing the things that I want to tattoo. People are looking to get the things that I'm known for. So, and I, I take pride in being able to draw their custom design for them. Right. Um, so that's why I say I'm right. So, tattoo. but yeah. and and you know, you having said that, don't get me wrong. I do. I totally understand that. But I still think of a lot of images as not even though it's custom. It's not necessarily about the art. Sometimes you're just creating something that you know this is these these you're ticking all the boxes of a design. You know what I mean? And you're just doing a really good version of that. Like like I said, when yeah. I say, like when I look at a tech, like when I look at a godhead or I look at a fucking, you know, I mean, to this pad, you know, koi fish and stuff. Yeah. To me, it's just, you're just doing the, the job. You know what I mean? It's like, I there's only so much you can do with a traditional tattoo. There's only so much you can do with a traditional Japanese tattoo. There's Would so you say a graphic tattoo. designer is an artist? Yes. So that's, and, and, uh, don't get me wrong, having said that, most people don't like so, so. I grew up. My favorite artist growing up, J.C. Leindecker, George Petty, fucking Alberto Vargas, fucking uh, wow, yeah, uh, um, uh, Frank Frazetta. Yeah, these are not fucking fine artists. They are fucking illustrators. Yeah, they made sure. a living doing illustration. I have you ever watched the um, the film? Uh, I'm getting a chill just bringing this up. You ever watch a sh- uh, the film called uh, Fire and Ice? It's a documentary on Frank Frazetta. Yes. Do you like Frank Frazetta? Yes. yes. You've seen it? Yes. The, there's an art historian in there that basically says, yeah, Frazetta stuff is selling for big money because of the collectors out there that want it. His work will never hang in the fucking museum. In the museums. Art. I remember never that. Hang in the fucking, it'll never, ever be considered fine art. And that, as an artist, 
is a swift kick to the fucking nuts. Huge. Because what separates fine art from illustration? From illustration. I mean, don't get me wrong. A lot of times it's just it's about putting the work out there, right. getting done. And, I mean, dude, there's stories of, uh, of George Petty and all these, uh, um, all these pinup artists from back in the day, the Esquire days. There was a story about how like all this artwork is sprayed out on the, on the, on the publisher's floor and he takes a cup of coffee and throws it oh, on all the original artwork. And says, yeah, whatever's not damaged, bring it back. That's that's what will get published this next year. Wow. Like I don't remember the exact the, I don't remember the exact phrase because I read this when I was like fucking twenty years old. That's insane. But I was just like, oh my god, could you yeah. imagine the artwork that you spend so much hard time? It would be the same thing as like tattooing a half sleeve on somebody, doing this beautiful tattoo, and then they fucking glob it up with A and D and go to the beach. <laughs> yeah, and spend the entire day at the beach, right? Just burn Roasting the it, and yeah. you hope they get cancer, in and out of the water. It just yeah. falls off. You know, um, it's a it's a similar situation. Yeah, so that's why I say, I think that art. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I think that there's a certain amount of art that goes into every little thing we do, down to names, because it, it is a skill set that not everybody can have. Ooh, dude, I do say that absolutely. anybody can tattoo. It's the little things that separate you from everybody else, right? Which is why I made a name. Which is why you've made a name. Which is why you've made a name. Yeah. And the people that we admire. That's why they've made a name. Yeah, you know. So while I do say it one way, I do look at it sometimes just a paycheck. Yeah, that's the internet here. So, um, but there are certain artists in our field that became that started painting. I mean, we all know those people. They all got became great. They're, they're oh, yeah. talented painters, you know. And these are the guys like I don't want to tattoo anymore. I want to be a painter. I want to be an artist. And I'm like, cool. Why don't you do us all a fucking favor? Throw your gear away. Yeah. And just go become Sorry. an artist. Sure. And and I've often said, I was like, dude, I got friends that are illustrators that smoke your dopey ass and yeah. they're having a hard time making a living. Right. So knock yourself the fuck out in the real world. Yeah. Because no matter what you say, our, we, we live in a bubble. Like it's sure. Most part, yeah. It is. It is. It is. So. It is. Yeah. As hard as it is to make a name for yourself and have people know you as a tattooer, it's so much harder to do it as an illustrator. Fuck yeah, dude. Oh, man. Oh, my there's God. A, there's, a, there's a big demand for tattoos. There's not that big of a demand for illustrators. No, I feel and like, now with AI? Oof. Yeah, fuck it. Dude, I feel these like these illustrators and comic book artists, like yeah. they've been. Dude, you know, see, so the thing is, when, when you're talking to tattooers and they go, "Oh, I fucking love AI. AI is amazing. I fucking AI is incredible, oh, man." I they got all these illustrators who are fucking losing their minds. Well, now yeah. if you if you go into I don't know about Midjourney, but if you go into ChatGPT and you ask it to create you an image for I did this the other day for a T-shirt design, it'll spit back. Things that it found on the internet similar to what you're looking for, and then underneath it, it'll say if. If you want something different, contact an artist, find someone on Etsy who could do this image for oh, you. Oh, for real? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, they, I think they're doing that to cover their, their ass. Yeah, yeah, because sure. how many people are actually going to go through those lens? They're oh, going like, to they're gonna be like, this is fine. Yeah. What I'm being presented right here, I want that. Yeah. They don't want to go through. They're not going to go to the next step. They, no. they, they can care less. But what it's showing you is no different than what you could do with Google search on. Yeah, but uh, it's way easier. The difference is the artist gonna, you're going to go through is going to fucking charge you. Of course. Yeah. And that's going to be the big, that's going to be yeah, the big that's, that's the same thing with tattooers. Like, yeah. like Kat Von D, I, I think she lost the case, the, the, the portrait of, um, mm -hmm. oh, she didn't lose it. Okay. She, 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 she wanted to do it. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's nice to hear that because that could have changed everything. That's true. You know what I mean? That could have literally changed everything on how we do stuff. I mean, we've always copied, you know, stuff. Yeah. We've always Im imitated. Yeah. That's, that's how things kind of like just morph. Exactly, and things meant, you know, that, I mean, styles, like I said, we're all, we, we just follow patterns, but there is a line, you know, there is a line of, uh, between imitation and straight forgery. Well, and that's why I said, that's why I think that a lot of tattooers don't necessarily have a problem yeah. with AI, where all these illustrators are like, no, man, that's my fucking, yeah, that's my soul. It's hard that's to crazy. More. It's not necessarily, it's not necessarily you verbatim. It's the little nuances that make you who you are. Yeah. I mean, that's one of those things. And you could say that with tattooing. Like, like you said, back in the day, people would rip my shit all the time. I would get mad if it was a direct rip off. But if I was influencing somebody, I never had a problem with that. Like when I published the book, I said, this book is meant to influence you, not use as flash. It yeah. literally says that in the fucking thing. Yeah. Nobody fucking listen. No. Copy the pictures direct. Yeah. Yeah. And the worst part is, I looked at it from the standpoint of like, motherfucker, that was a sketch. That wasn't ready to roll, dude. I would have redrawn that thing like two, three times. Yeah. You literally took it verbatim and put it on somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I look at the way I used to draw back in the day. It's not good. 
you know, it's kind of no offense to anybody I tattooed back in the day, but a lot of this, uh, some of the drawings are <laughs> 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 That's just great. <laughs> uh, we love it. <laughs> but but it is it is one of those things where we're always trying to become better and, and to just take one thing. Now, I think we look at the work that's so good. You almost use it with fly, like a flash. Yeah. You almost look at it and be like, oh, that's a great flower. I'm just going to take that. Yep. You know Shoot. what I mean? Yeah. And the internet makes that a lot easier. Pinterest makes that a lot easier. Even with me. like I'll Even really if I'm does. pulling reference, I do try to change it a little bit. But there comes a yeah. point where it's like sometimes... Fucking rose is a rose, dude. Yeah, like yeah. flower is a flower, you know. So it's it's really it is really difficult. There is a fine line, and that line gets thinner and thinner it does. every single day. Yeah, which is freaky. I've been trying to train myself to redraw things over and over again, like the same rose. Right? I'll take a picture of a rose. I'll draw it as I see it. Then I'll take the reference away. Now I'll redraw that. my drawing, and then just keep doing that over and over again until it just they're making copies of copies. It's going to get different. It's right. going to change. Yeah. Over. I'm trying to train myself to get my my drawing so far removed from the thing that I'm looking at that right. it becomes my own thing. So that was the advice we used to give people back in the day. Used to go through pads of tracing paper that way. And the the, the beauty of the iPad is, it's right there. Yeah, yeah. You can change. You can you can literally do a hundred and one. You can literally do a hundred and one uh, versions of the same image mm-hmm. and never have to fucking flip a page, which yeah. is a big fucking deal. Yeah, you know, huge fucking. Deal. Um, so one of the things I wanted to ask you, uh, and we can end on this cause we can talk for a bit, uh, but I would do want to ask you guys to put your, your own spin on the, this whole podcast thing, yeah. but, uh, trending styles, um, the stuff that we see popular today, whether it be, uh, cyber sigilism mm-hmm. or it's even hard to say, it's not even oh. just the name. It's just the whole idea. Yeah. Of yeah it just, um, the trending styles that we see today, uh, the micro tattoos, the yeah. fucking, especially um, the micro tats, you know, the, 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 fo- the, tr- the, the, the photorealistic tattoos, all these different things, all these different trendy tattoos. Like yeah. I saw it happen with new school, even though I never considered myself a new school tattooer. Um, I saw it happen with new school. Everything changes. Everything dramatically starts to fold over on itself with the, the current state of, uh, uh, of the, the internet and everything else. How do you think, how long do you think these trends are going to stick around? Do you think there's going to be a turnover into the next thing, into the next thing? Or is it going to That's be like question. what we dealt with back in the day where it's like nothing changes? It's always There's always going to be some knucklehead out there that wants a shitty, scratchy, fucking yeah. tribal shit tattoo that they're going to fucking hate because people think they went to prison. Yeah. Mm, I think those guys are always going to be around, for sure. Yeah. What I've noticed is that at least what gets reshared on Instagram are the things that lean more towards the super realistic, really complex, uh, like geometric stuff that has like a lot of layers. And, right. um, so like the neo trad stuff that's maybe like a realistic lady head with traditional flowers around it. Right. The realism always is going to get reshared. The I, super- feel that, I feel that has to do with like the machine that is social media though, because like the algorithms, just like, you know, like the algorithm, like let's say you have like a, and by saying algorithm, we're not necessarily just saying straight up algorithm. No, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of things that we correct. Like that. There's a lot of exactly because you made a comment before. So it's not always about an algorithm, yeah. right? So it's like it leans more towards like faces and people, which is why, like, you know, it's you know, it's gonna well, I mean, even to the regular it's... person, they're gonna think it's more impressive if somebody can execute a tattoo that looks realistic to their eyes. They won't see the value or the skill. In like let's say a perfectly executed like Japanese or traditional. Tattoo. Well, I mean, what I'm saying is, if you if you look at some of the the pages that are just strictly a resharing page, everything on there is going to be mostly hyper realistic, oh, black and that, yeah. either mostly, color, yeah. color yeah. like realism. Yeah. So I think that the uh, the clientele is is starting to lean more. Depending on, it doesn't matter what kind of style. Like if you do neo trad, let's do a little bit more realism. If you do micro tats, let's do like a realistic micro. Right. I, think, I think that's where we're kind of heading right now. So yeah. you're thinking that people are just going to start refining what they have already seen. Yeah. So because the funny thing about the whole neo-trad fucking realism thing, I see that happening as, as well. Like you have guys, and it's not neo, neo-trad, but it's uh, 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 Dave Paulo. He was one of the first people to take these weird uh, shapes and colors and, and flat tones and then put it over a realistic tattoo. He's one of the first that I can recall. Mm-hmm. I'm sure yeah. there's maybe somebody before. Um but Dave was one of the first people to do that. 
I, whenever I try to draw something like that or bring something like that to the table, it gets passed the fuck over. Really? Because that's more my wheelhouse. I want to do something that's more like I did it. Like I started drawing Neo Trout stuff. Fucking kills me. And it's funny, you guys just did a thing where it's like, don't follow the fucking trends. Do your <laughs> thing, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And, it, and, and and I can say from having yeah. tried to throw stuff at people that that's that stuff, people just don't want to see it from me. You know what I mean? So it's like, it is one of those situations where it's like, I would love to do the tattoos because I think that they're great drawings. And it's something that I would dig yeah. on doing and it still has my thumbprint on it. But people are just not, they're just not falling for it. Yeah. They're just like, nope, that's not New York Tribe. Go fuck yourself. Go back to the fucking corner. Yeah, you know, I think go these, back like, to your dated, the yeah, dated think, part of the calendar. Exactly. I think these things just kind of like repeat themselves. I, I feel like even if a lot like, you know, mini, you know, little like super high realistic mini portraits and like these like mini, what I would consider like almost like mini oil paintings. Oh, yeah. Right. With no out, with no yeah. black whatsoever. Yeah. I feel like humanity always has to learn their own lessons it doesn't matter how much we tell them it's not going to work it's not going to work it's going to they're going to be like oh maybe they're telling me it's not going to work because they can't do it oh that's always a big thing yeah you know i mean mean, you remember anil gupta oh yeah he's got decades of work that we have to see that we're just kind of like yeah i mean fucking pond was in here last year he's talking about how like fucking (laughs) anil's getting sued from one of his clients oh wow really yeah Anil, anil had done a bunch of work on his back and the guy's like, yeah, what the fuck, dude? Like, the whole work, the whole, all the work's got to be redone. Right, it's just, you know, and, just and, flattens out. And the crazy thing, too, is now there was a big article in the magazines, uh, not a uh, big article in the news about, and this was probably about four months now, five months, Inked Magazine getting, was getting sued. Oh, that's was, right. They were. Some dude got, or they got are. tattooed with this, like, the guy wanted a back piece, uh, a back piece that he brought in from somebody else. Oh, yeah, we were talking about the right thing. Yeah, and yeah. the guy was incapable, but... You know, I went to Ink Magazine. I'm paying fucking 2500 bucks a fucking hour. Yep. I, don't know, I don't know how much you're paying. But, <laughs> but it was one of those things. You go to a reputable shop. You think you're going to get a reputable tattoo. And all of a sudden, it turns to shit. Correct. And everybody goes, fucking, you know. Yeah. How, well, why? I mean, this is this is how I'm supposed to go about doing it. That's the crazy thing. And I think that's what you're talking about. Un, unrealistic expectations. Oh, for exactly. Exactly. You know? um, that's unfortunate. But. Yeah. Yeah. I think too many people are getting into tattoo and thinking that, oh, I mean, it's a common thing. I could do this too. And they can't. Right. And exactly. They're, just, they're fooling a lot of people. And well, I think get themselves I, into trouble. I, well, exactly. I think that's a big deal. Like even with me, like there are certain things that I just simply won't do. And it's not because I probably can't. There are better people to do it. Right. And I just don't want to attempt it because yeah. if I do shit the bed, I don't want to deal with the repercussions. I am not above. I just exactly. handed over a client. So I tattooed my nephew. And thank God he wanted me to tattoo him one of like something that I would draw, right. like Neo Trapeze. And then his buddy's like, nice from family, right? Yeah, right. How many times does family ever want to get your style? Right, they never. Like, right? Just... So like, thank God. But then his buddy saw that tattoo and like, oh shit, your uncle's a tattooer. I want to get tattooed also. <sighs> so they start contacting me, like, oh, I want to do this tattoo. I just saw, I just saw your nephew's piece. I want to get tattooed by you also. All right, cool. What do you want? I want to do this realistic rose and realism, black and gray. I'm like, cool. Talk to Gabe. He passed it over to me. Because <laughs> like, like I, that burns my ass. Because we get the, every time I get it, it comes like, yeah, I'm gonna give this guy wants this. I'm like, motherfucker, you could do it. You just don't want to. Yeah, he, I, yeah you're right. I could do he, it. He, he Gabe could, could do, do it. it a lot better. He could do it, and he didn't. But he didn't want to. And I and I was just like. But at the same time, that's that's why you know he's my bro because it's just like I'll take that money. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's when and that's when it, that's yeah. when it comes back to what I was saying before. Sometimes you make money exactly, and that's not a bad thing yeah. as a tattoo. And I think that's yeah, something. Thank you. Thank huh? you. And honest, and I was gonna say that honestly, like at first I was like I'll take that money. You know, I'll do the best job that I could. Right. And you know, I vibed with the kid. He was cool. He was open to my ideas. He was flexible. And I ended up giving something. And, you know, when we finished up his tattoo, he was like. You gave me exactly what I wanted, but so much more. That's, and, that, and that's the best thing that I could hear. That is that, that is really doing. nice. I mean, that's it, I like hearing that more than I like hearing, well, this came out so much better yeah, than yeah, I yeah. thought it would go. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's why, Joe, I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, uh, is there anything else you guys want to add? I don't have any words of yeah. wisdom. I think we pretty much shit our... Shit yeah, out we did. Wisdom. We, we had that. Yeah, yeah, no, is there anything else you want to add to this, or you guys are... Good to have you on that. Thank you for having us, man. Yeah, thank you for having us. I was gonna, I was gonna literally say, you know, with everything that's happening in tattooing, I feel like 
this could be kind of like a good thing. It's like the dog that's really like shaking, scratching those fleas off. Like I think the 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 real like the real ticks of this, like we're really gonna like grab on and stay on. We're gonna ride this wave. Yeah. And I feel like it's really gonna shake off like the fakers. Because, the, 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 yeah. You know, because well, tattooing is 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 I mean that's special to us. I wanna you know, believe not, that name, but I don't know. I'm I'm the same thing. I don't think it's gonna happen, dude. Like I want to be, I want to be head in the clouds and think that way as well. But I do have, I think that <laughs> I'm a hopeless I, romantic. <laughs> no, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I think the biggest issue comes from the fact that a lot of the people that are getting into it now don't realize how good it used to be. Yeah, that's and again, true. when people call you an old head, which by the way is the stupidest fucking word yeah, I've ever heard anybody call. Sorry for using the R word. Yeah, exactly. No, don't be because whatever. <laughs> what did they say in that one verse? We got to bring it back. Um, you know, right? oh, but the, the idea behind the fact that uh, I don't think they knew any better, and I think that they, while raising the bar by twenty five hundred all day rates and eighteen hundred all day rates and all the craziness, I know. they've also lowered the bar too. Because instead of going yeah. into shop six days a week and doing two three touches a day and going going home happy, even though you worked your ass off, right? These people go in two three days a week, make fair amount of money and then go home and just go, well, oh, it was a good week. Yep. And we look at it as like, really? Damn. Like, do you not have a car payment? Do right. you not have a... That like, yeah, also, like, you have anything you pay for? Or? There's a lot of tattooers now that are coming into the game that they just don't care what the long game looks like. That's the John was just telling us right. that he met this girl at the bar right. who's new into tattooing. She showed him his portfolio and it was all like the cyber sigilism stuff and it looked like trash. And he was like, that's cool, but don't you care what this is going to look like in 10 years from now? And she's like, what do you mean? So they had, like, didn't even phase yeah. her. Yeah. Did not even not care. Not thinking about it at all. But again, what I was saying before about like seeing a traditional tattoo 25 years later and seeing a, a tattoo that I did 25 years later, I look at them yeah. both and I'm like, well, you can still tell that's my tattoo. You can't help but go, that's a fucking nice tattoo. The other one. You know, the, 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 the proper trad one. It's just and the it, structure. And it is one of those things that does make you rethink the way you do stuff. It's not yeah. only about age and changing the way I draw and, cha- and and have to do things. It's also about, man, sometimes it's just cool to see something age, see something that look like a proper tattoo. Yeah, that's true. But again, I'm also thick-headed where I'll sit back and I'll go, I'll draw something up with the intentions of turning this into a fucking proper traditional tattoo. Yeah. And the second I start lining, I'm like, fucking type three. <laughs> you, know what's, you know what's crazy about that? Just think about it like in uh, in the sense of like, you know, if we've ever traveled anywhere, we've seen like some like old structures, right? Like some castles and yeah. stuff. Like I'm sure they look nice and crispy, brand new. Yeah. But with age, you know, with the moss growing on them, yeah. you know, it's just like, you know, it's still there. Foundations are really important. Those are the buildings we get on a jet across the ocean. Yeah. I mean, travel to and travel cities. to go see them. Exactly. Yeah. And tattooing, technically, when those people come to you personally, <laughs> you sit back and go, damn, that's a fucking cool tattoo. Yeah. And it could look like a blurry, you know, pile of shit, but it still looks better than something I would have done that far back. That far back. So, you know, yeah. So, yeah. Alright, so awesome. uh, on that note, <laughs> hey. I, I do. I, I really, really want to thank you guys for coming out. Um, Thanks for having us. I really appreciate you guys coming out from, to from to you know to the country. Um, <laughs> everybody, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, like and subscribe. I will have all yes. of their information in the description of the video. Um, and check these guys out, man. They're no joke. So thanks, thanks you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. Hello.